very good to see you here today. I can see there's um, many more people than yesterday and the day before. And this is good, very good. Who's the, the, the first time, first time this week of prayer? Just to see. Okay, there's one there, one there, okay. Okay, you're very welcome. And um, I'm very happy to be um, in this week of prayer because um, me, myself, had the opportunity to contemplate again some kind of re-encounter with, with Christ in this week. And my proposal for, for you in this week is, is to you to re-encounter again Jesus Christ. And this is my proposal, like every end of the sermon, this is the proposition that I am having um, for you. But before we start, I want you to do the exercise that we're doing every, every night and open your Bible um, on the book of Mark, chapter 1. Just the beginning of the book of Mark, chapter 1. And um, you will read with, with your buddy on your side. Read with him or with her. Chapter 1, verse 40. And you will read until, until the end of the chapter, until verse 45. Okay, Mark, chapter 1, verse 40 until the verse 45. And I will give you two minutes for you to read, then we, we start here. Okay, everybody read, okay, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, uh, thank you for one more day that we will get in touch with your word, get in touch with the life of our Savior. Please, maybe this word touch our heart and change our lives, make a miracle in our hearts. In Jesus' name, we pray for all the people that are here and all the people that can't be here as well. Please be with them, guiding them as well. And please, see the Holy Spirit fulfill this, this church now because we are going to read your word and study your word. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Well, this is a very, very well-known uh, miracle. And a very short miracle, you know, just five verses, and you can see a um, description um, from, from the chosen that you've prepared. Very interesting as well, very emotional. Every time that I saw, I start crying. I was crying there, just holding myself not to, you know, because I have to come up in the pulpit. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's one of my favorite times and moments of Jesus, you know, because this miracle here means a lot. When we talk about leprosy today, it's not a big thing because it's not a, you know, a disease that is very, you know, unknown or there is no cure of it. Leprosy, it's 
some of kind of a skin disease. Then we have, we have cure, you know. If you had this, the right treatment, and you will not, you know, um, uh, die because of, the, because of the, the skin disease, you know. You will not be apart from, from the others. But in that time, it was totally different. Leprosy was not a thing that was, was normal. They didn't have the cure. They didn't have the treatment. They didn't have the right medicine for the skin disease. And leprosy in that time was not just the disease leprosy, but all the disease that comes in the skin. So every time there was a process for them, you know, you go to the temple, you go to the high priest, he was the doctor in that time, and said, look, I'm having some kind of, uh, you know, wound in my skin, and I just want, wanted to know if it's leprosy or if it's something else. And the high priest would examine the, the person and said, go and come seven days later. And you come seven days later, and I will analyze again, and just to see if the you know, if this is it's gone or it's getting worse. So this was the process, you know. And the person just, you know, went away. Seven days later, come to the temple again, Jerusalem. Look, it's getting worse. So this is, was the worst news for a person in that time. It's even worse than the death something very complicated because the high priest saw it and said, you are unpure. You have leprosy. So you have to left the city. And all the guys that have leprosy left the city. Look, leave the city. It's not just the city. You have to leave your family. You have to leave your wife, your kids. You have to leave your husband. You have to leave everything. Just take your stuff, your personal stuff, and we will live out of the city in a place where there is only leprosy people. And while you are, you know, going through the city, you have to shout, you have to scream, I'm clean, I'm clean, I have leprosy. And the people's like, okay. And the guy and the woman or the man just went through the city and go out, this, out of the city. So it was more than a disease. It was a, a curse. It was the worst thing in that time to have leprosy. It's a sentence of death, loneliness, despair. It's a, it's a sen sentence of exclusion, you know. So that's why it means so much, this miracle or this healing here. Because the rules, the law was very strict. There was no place of different interpretations, you know. Oh, if the skin is like that or if the wound is, is big enough, no. Nah. If the high priest saw you and said, you are with leprosy, that's it, period. So anyone can't touch you. Anyone could not, not approach you. Nothing. You can't do nothing anymore. Nothing anymore. So you live with people with leprosy, excluded. And there are lots of types of um, this disease, you know. The most popular of it is by the time goes by, you're losing the tips of your, your fingers, your ears, tips of your ears. The extremities of your body, you were just losing it. So sad. It's tragic. So you can imagine, not just the damage, physical damage, but psychological damage as well. And what, what is interesting is that um, in this past two years, the thing is we, we experienced just a bit what, what, what is to be in isolation, right? Just a bit. You can imagine. Um, I don't know if everybody here got COVID, but if you got COVID, you know that you, you had to be isolated for 14 days, right? 
You remember that? Who, who uh, went through this experience? Just, just to see. Isolated because got COVID and everything. So it was a nice experience. Very good experience, right? <laughs> no, 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 yeah. It was horrible, yeah. You feel like you know, you were with leprosy, right? You can't be in touch with anyone, you know. You have to be in your room, sometimes just in your room, because there is lots of people in your house. There is negative, so you don't want to pass on because it's very contagious, highly contagious, and you just just like the prison, you put the, the tray with the food and pop, close the door. <laughs> yeah, it's funny now, right? <laughs> it was horrible, so you can imagine, because it's, it, it has a due date, right? 14 days and you're free, right? So you count, you know, like the prison, day one, day two, day three. And you count that like the calendar said, okay, last day, last day, and I'm free and everything. But for them, it was a disease without a cure. Without a time that you will be free again. Without a time that you, you have your family again with you. There is no possibility anymore for a normal life for them. But what's so hard? That's why it was, was just some, you know, a little bit of experience what, what that, you know, that people over there was going through. You can't do nothing anymore. Just wait until you, you die. That's it. So it was too, too hard on them. Too hard. And the law was too hard. If you see the law, Leviticus chapter 12, chapter 13, Talks about specifically talks about the, the, the people with leprosy. You know, you are unclean until you die, and that's it. Too hard. Too hard. But here comes Jesus. Verse 40. A man with leprosy came to him. So this is kind of madness. And you saw that, you know? A man with leprosy came to Jesus, approached Jesus. Yes, that, that was a tough decision for a desperate decision. Because he was breaking the law, first place, and he was just risking your life. Because the disciples were there. Maybe it was more than, you know, more than the disciples over there, more than the 12. There was much more. Because Jesus has already started healing. And if you see um, just back in the, the chapter 1, you can see that Jesus is healing lots of people. And probably this guy heard about someone that can heal and that can transform and make miracles. And he went all in and came to him and begged him on his knees and said if you are willing you can make me clean if just if you want I can imagine that Jesus is not you know close enough for him in that time yet but he just fell down with the face on the floor Matthew talks about this miracle as well with the face on the floor like in the position of honoring in a position of adoration and said, if you're willing, if you want to heal me, if you want to make me clean, you can do it. And verse 41, Jesus said, Jesus was indignant. So in other translations and in other manuscripts says, Jesus was filled with compassion. You know, and the verb here in, in Greek, it is the same verb for the guts. So the guts of Jesus Christ was impelling him in compassion for this guy, for this person. Jesus was filled with compassion. And he reached out his hand and touched the man. And said, yes, I want. 
Yes, I am, I'm, I'm willing. I'm willing. So you can imagine how great it was, this miracle, because Jesus just broke every law possible here now. Every law. You remember the law that we talked about yesterday and talked about the day before? Not just the Ten Commandments, but the entire, the entire Old Testament. The five, the five books, the five first books of the Bible. And Jesus said, yes, I want to, to heal you. I want you to make you clean. And I will break every possible law to do this. This is very challenging for the disciples and for us as well. I will challenge the religious law at that time to heal you. To transform your life. Not just to heal your wounds, but to get you your life again, to you, to, for you to get back your life again. Go with your family, with, with your kids, and with your friends and everything. This is, a, this, is, this is huge. Because he's not just healing the leprosy in this person. He's touching him. And this is <laughs> outrageous. And, and you know what? I love when Jesus does this. I love it. Because he's challenging the religious people over there. And said, the compassion that I have for the people here is bigger than your law. The love that I have for the people that are suffering is much more bigger than the law that you put on the top of everything. My body is filled with compassion and there is nothing that can stop me. Jesus is talking with actions. Jesus is, is, is saying with your hands, with his hands. And in other translations, it said, he reached out his hand and touched. In other translations, it said, he reached out his hand, his hand and embraced him. That's why the title today is Embrace. And embraced him. Not just touching him, but embrace him. And what is, what is challenge for me as well is that Leprosy is not a big thing today. It has cure, you know. But one thing that I'm, you know, um, just thinking in my heart is that why this, this, this story is in the Bible, you know. Because anyway, God knew that leprosy was not a big thing in the future, right? It was not a big thing anymore. So why is that? What lesson that God want me to learn here? And the first lesson for us is that in your life, in your society, in your family, in your work, in the place that you live, who are? The people with leprosy. And when I talk about leprosy, I'm talking about something that you think it is unclean. Something that you don't want to touch. Something that you don't want to deal with. Something that you exclude in your life. Who are the people that have leprosy in your life that you don't want to deal with? Have you thought about that? I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking that my entire week. And when I was preparing the message for this, this week, I was just numbering the people in my life that has leprosy. 
And I know that any of us here, maybe all of us, there are some kinds of people that we don't, we don't want to, you know, get in touch with. You, you don't have to answer me this question. This is a question for you. What Jesus is trying to teach us here in this, in this moment is that there is people in your life that you considered unclean. There is people in your life that you want to exclude from your church, exclude from your house, exclude from your, you know, your relationships. But Jesus touched them, embraced them. So what's the lesson for me? Am I learning with Jesus that I have sometimes to go against everybody, to go against the common sense? To get in touch with these people. It's too hard for me as a religious guy, <clears throat> as a pastor, as someone that's born in church, to see people different from me and to treat them in a way that Jesus will treat. It's too hard for me. Because I'm, I'm with a lot, lots of prejudice. I'm lots of, you know, ways of, of excluding people. I have my ways of doing this. And I, in the moment I started to um, stop and think about the life of that, of that people, I started to think about how Jesus treated them. And the lesson that I have to take out of here to my life. I don't know if I, if I want to deal with them, with healing for them. But Jesus wants to do this. And it's very, very easy for us to separate. Oh, this is Jesus. I'm just a human. Oh, this is, this is Jesus. He, he, he can do everything. Ah, you know, I'm just a human. I'm, you know, I'm imperfect, you know, I, you know. So the thing here is that Jesus put this moment and, and inspired Mark to write this. It's for you to understand. It's for me to understand that we have to act like Jesus. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. Against everything, everything, Jesus made a miracle. Against everything, the law, the religious, the disciple, the, everything, Jesus touched him. And what was contagious in there was not the leprosy, was the power of the Son of God. The power of the Son of God was the thing that was contagious. Because Jesus is passing life for him. Not the contrary. Not the leprosy guy is passing leprosy for Jesus, but it's the contrary. Jesus is passing life. It's passing hope. It's passing inclusion again to the society, to the religious places. And that, that's the thing. And Jesus um, sent him away and said, see, you don't tell this to anyone, please. But just go and show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded. And the law back then, Leviticus 12 and 13, for your cleansing as a testimony to them. 
But, of course, <laughs> after this big miracle, there is no possibility for him to, you know, to be shut. And instead, he went out and began to talk freely, spreading the news. He talked freely and spreading the news. And he is free again to do whatever he want, wanted to do. Again, there is no condition here for the miracle. There is just Jesus treating the leprosy, treating the diseases of the society with compassion, with filled with compassion for them. This is a challenging lesson for us, for us to not to pay attention a lot in the religious rituals, but paying attention more to the people that are with the disease. Maybe not a physical disease, sometimes a spiritual disease. The people that are excluded. People that we don't want to touch. We don't want to think about them. It's too hard to think. People that are totally different from me and from you. What are we doing as a followers of Christ? What I am doing when I, when I read and learn for this story? I know it's hard. Eh? I'm in a fight with me this past two, three years because I'm trying to Take this word seriously. I'm more wor worried with people than with what the other persons will think about me. I'm worried with people that need the touch of Jesus. And it's a daily struggle that I'm having it. But I really want to meet this Jesus over there, that embrace what society excludes. I really want to meet this Jesus over there, that embrace what us as a church cast out. What are, are we willing to do to touch and heal these people. This list that you're doing in your, in your head right now, the leprosy people in your list, what are you willing to do? Are you willing? Just like Jesus, I'm willing. I really want to. I really want to heal these people. I really want to be the hands of Jesus for these people. I really want to be the arms of Jesus. I really want to be the embrace of Jesus Christ, Son of God, God of miracles, the God of healing. And the proposal for today is for you to meet this Jesus. To meet him, to imitate him. To meet him and be just like this guy, this guy that is cured now. Go over there. And speak freely. And said, I can't stand anymore to be in the way that I was. I really to talk now. And I really to be someone that is healed by him. My prayer today is for you to meet him again. I know that there are moments in your life that you meet him. That you have your encounters with Jesus. But my proposal today is for you to hang count him. Ring count him again. And take off the things that are putting you away from him. The things that people just put in front of you for you not to touch him, for you not to be in front of him. And I know that he can 
transform and heal you just like he did with the leprosy man. And may God bless you in this search again. May God bless you in this, um, in this way, in this narrow way. There is not easy some days and it's challenging some days. The word of God is challenging you in some way. That's good. That's a sign that you're not there inside. The Holy Spirit is challenging you in this night now to be like him. To be like Jesus. To abandon your prejudice. Abandon this feeling of exclusion. This feeling of not have to deal with people that are different from me. Different from my beliefs. Different from my backgrounds. Different from my religion. Different from my sexuality. I really want to be like Jesus. I really want to touch these people. I really, I really want to speak freely. May God bless you. And bless you in this path of healing. In this path of miracles. In this path of embrace. Amen.
Father, our Savior, our miracle maker. We humbly put your, our heads now on the ground to ask you, to beg you, to heal our heart, to make a miracle in our lives, for us to see people in the way that you see us. Please fill our body with compassion. Fill our hearts with a willing to embrace. I know that sometimes it's, it's go against our will. But my prayer today, it's for us to say exactly the same that you said in that moment with the leprosy man. I'm willing, I'm willing to touch. I'm willing to heal, I'm willing to embrace. Please be with us. Put in our hearts the desire to show the salvation, to speak freely, to talk about liberation, to talk about the good news of your gospel, the good news of salvation for people. Be with everybody here. And please, that everybody here desire to be more like you day by day. Give us a um, blessed night and bring us tomorrow again for us to learn a little bit more about you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.